Well, HUD, let's talk about conflict. You know, scripture says we are charged with the, the message of reconciliation, which requires, I mean, leaning into the process, forgiveness, communication, all, all those relational dynamics. And one thing I've heard you share on before is the difference between fighting and wrestling and how this is key in approaching conflict. Well, uh, we get a message, like you've implied, that conflict is bad and uh, it shouldn't exist and we should get rid of it. And uh, if you're really good, you know, you'll, people make a living on conflict resolution in our world. But uh, I think just understanding the dynamic helps. Uh, everybody, I believe, uh, are, has n the natural ability to fight. Yeah. I don't think you have to work at it. I just think it comes, right? And you, all you have to do is watch kids playing yeah. and trying to navigate their, their world as little children even, you know. Even before they, even when they're doing parallel play, they're still trying to win in some way. And so <clears throat> I think about it this way, and this has just been helpful for me, and so thanks for letting me talk about it. Uh, I'd put fighting here. And I would say there are two things about fighting that help identify it. One is that there, is, there are no rules in fighting and there are no time limit. So, so what that means is that if I'm in a fight with you, yeah. uh, there aren't any boundaries to it. I can, I can fight any time, I can fight any way. I can use a lead pipe, I can use sarcasm, I can use passive aggressive behavior I can use, yeah. you know, whatever. And there's no time limit. Hmm. So you, you can be walking down the hall and I can trip you, you know, I can, I can blindside you, I can do all the, those kind of things. And the purpose of fighting is to win. Yeah. Uh, and I can't emphasize that enough because that's a very Western world, uh, American uh, <clears throat> capitalistic idea. Uh, winning, winning at all costs. In fact, I wrote a little article about that, you know, winning isn't everything, it's the only thing, I think was what Lombardi said, you know, in the NFL. And I get that, I get the competitive thing. Don't be bashing my Packers. I'm so yeah. sorry. <laughs> Tread lightly. Cheeseheads, unite, whatever. Uh, so winning and losing has an interesting dynamic relationally. Yeah. Anytime you lose, you, you remember it and there's a teeny bit of bitterness, mm. uh, you know, dropped into your soul in a sense. Uh, and I think it's the, it's, it's the mistake we make because this is, this is primitive, underdeveloped, undeveloped, if you will, people, maldeveloped in some way. Uh, but everybody fights yeah. and they fight with whatever they have. So. Uh, if you feel you're weaker, I worked with a whole bunch of domestic abuse victims for five or eight years, kind of specialized in that a little bit. And uh, people that are victims of domestic abuse, it's complicated, but also what you find is they fight in a different way. And, but they, they're fighting to win, to survive maybe is language you would use, but there's no rules and no time limit. And, it's, and a lot of people get stuck there. Yeah. And when a relationship gets stuck there, it's just crazy. The biblical message is we should learn how to wrestle. And there's a couple reasons to think about this in this way. The famous story is Jacob's story. Yeah. Jacob being kind of a goofy guy. He was, I call him a used car salesman. No offense to all the used car salesmen that are listening to this. but. Uh, I don't think he ever did anything straight. Mm. Uh, he was a con man. He was a chiseler, a cheat, a, you know, a deceiver was part of what his name means, or a supplanter, or there's a lot of ways you can define his name. But Jacob just was a mess, absolute mess. And I don't know who was worse, Jacob or his mother, actually, right. the beginning of that story. <laughs> Nevertheless, he gets to this one place by this brook, and he has this wrestling match with this angel. Hmm. Well, the angel apparently is Jesus himself. 
And uh, I often ask people, you know, okay, so you know the story, and they had this wrestling match. Who won the wrestling match? Well, most people think they can't say Jacob won it, so they say Jesus won it. But the fact is, Jacob won it. It says Jacob wrestled with the angel of the Lord and prevailed. So he, like, pinned Jesus to the ground, and he says, I'm not letting you up till you bless me. Hmm. So it, it, when Jesus lets him up, the blessing apparently is this deranged hip he gave. So I've, I've probably read 25 books on the limp that Jacob had yeah. and all kinds of interpretations of that. So I feel very free in interpreting it in my own way since they're all different, right? <laughs> so I think what happened was uh, Jesus actually blessed Jacob by keeping him from running because every time Jacob did a deal, he ran away from it. He, you know, if you sell a car that doesn't have an engine in it, and the person discovers it doesn't have an engine in it, they're going to yeah. bring it back. And if you, if you don't want to be caught, you have to run away so yeah. they can't catch you. So that's the whole, whole deal. The other fascinating thing about that story is it changed, they changed his name from Jacob to Israel. Israel. And the name Israel in Hebrew means people who wrestle with God. God wrestlers. So the Israelite nation was to be a nation that wrestled with God. Now, wrestling is a contact sport. <laughs> you, you, every fiber of your being is involved in wrestling. And, and Greco-Roman wrestling or American interscholastic or intercollegiate wrestling, uh, it's, it's a very short sport. It lasts only nine minutes and yeah. three three-minute periods and that kind of stuff. So wrestling has all this stuff to it, and this is what makes it qualitatively and quantitatively different than fighting. There is a, uh, there are a bunch of rules. So to contrast it with this, and there is a time limit. And there is a referee. And there is a uh, uniform. And it's uh, done on a mat, so there's a place for it. And there is a, uh, there's an equality to it. You have to be equally matched in terms of weight, and equally matched in terms of skill level, hopefully, and, and talent. Would you, would you say kind of a ready opponent? Yeah. Because in a fight, you can ambush somebody, but in healthy conflict, it's... you facing them directly. You're, you're facing a ready opponent. In the light, in the middle of the mat, right. And you go off the mat, they pull you back on. You know, I mean, it's got all this stuff to it. So you can go on. You can even list more of these. In a fight, you can, you can attack somebody in the stands. Here, you have to wait until the mat's rolled out. Yeah. Right? So there's all of this containment is the word I would use. So a wrestling match is a containment. Marriage ought to be a primary wrestling match. Actually, here we go. Good sex is a wrestling match. Mm. <laughs> it's... it's unpredictable in some ways and it's it's uh yeah it's got a novelness to it and it's but it's a contact sport and it's it takes energy and it's should involve you fully and it's part of how god made us and and he wants us to celebrate in that way and i think too often we diminish all of this and try to contain it and control it in a different way and so uh wrestling is this great idea but he it comes, you come away from a wrestling match in a win-win proposition. And by that, when you come off the mat, you know how you stacked up in terms of your being in shape and your skill level against this opponent mm. uh, at this moment. So nobody loses ultimately in this deal. Here, you keep score in such a way that it's pretty devastating. Mm when people lose and so and this is an individual sport but it's done as in a team so I you just have all these dimensions to it yeah. uh, if I could teach this to a couple uh, they'll realize they can't just spontaneously deal with an issue they have to deliberately yeah. get ready prepare etc so I, I use this quick illustration uh, in order to write a 20-minute dialogue for a TV show. Uh, there was a TV show that was a, a comedy, and it, 
had three characteristics of the writing, and the writing was it had to be funny, it had to be uh, sensitive psychologically, sound psychologically, and it had to be uh, racially sound. And he had, there were three groups of people that actually wrote the funny part and rewrote the psychological part and rewrote the racial part, the sociological part. Uh, and the author of the article said, how long does it, how many clock hours, man hours does it take if you had eight or seven or eight people in each of those groups uh, to write this one 20 minute dialogue and people guess all kinds of stuff and I wanted to beat the system and so I said 300 hours and the guy said no, the average is 1,000 hours to write that one script. Wow. We watched the script uh, in the show and it looks like perfection. It just rolls so sweetly. The, the, each line is said clearly. It fits. It has all that to it. But they spent a thousand hours preparation. So I would ask you, when was the last time you spent a thousand hours getting ready for a conversation with Kristen? <laughs> yeah. You know, it would change the conversation if you spent that, right? You and I spent some time trying to shape some of this today. Uh, why in preparation for it? So it's just not random. Yeah. Uh, even though that. But even that in the preparation, like you know, a wrestler who is preparing for a fight spends majority of their time focusing on themselves, getting in shape. That's right. Understanding what they, what their gifts are and how they wrestle, etc. Yeah. You know where I think sometimes when people approach conflict, they prepare by stacking ammunition. Uh, yeah, I'm going into it guns blazing, and I, I think sometimes it's it's beating your opponent to the punch, you know, and doing the hard work and owning. Hey, where where do you come up short in this situation? If if you win in a conflict in a in a relationship, the relationship always takes the hit. Yeah. So winning a fight means the relationship loses. Wrestling means that the relationship wins. Uh, that's what the, that's the major difference. And so mm. when God pronounces Jacob's new name, which is powerful in the Old Testament, only God could rename somebody, uh, that name, God wrestler, Israel, is him inviting them into a wrestling match with him. And you think of all the wrestling matches, you know, Moses, yeah. uh, you're to lead my people out of e e Egypt. Me, I can't talk. Who made your mouth? I mean, they're just arguing back and forth, we said, okay, you know, I'll let Aaron do it, but you've got to go do it anyway, you know? Yeah. And so they do this back and forth thing, or Abraham saying, if I can find X number of righteous people in this city, will you save it? Then he keeps going, you know, he says, from five down to, I don't, I don't remember exactly what the numbers are, but finally it gets down to one or two, <laughs> you know? And he says, if I can find one, will you save the city, you know? Uh, that's a wrestling match, right? That's a negotiation. That's, a, that's what God wants. He wants us to engage in this relationship with him.